anytime, any day. Why not right now? Stop looking up to your boss and start being your own boss. Don't work for paychecks. Work for dreams with no regrets. This is Cracking the Entrepreneur Code. If you have the passion, we'll create the blueprint. Now, your host. You know him from his seven tips to build the business you always wanted. And now, you're about to hear a lot more. Jack H.M. Wong. Welcome, 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 welcome to Cracking the Entrepreneur Code Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Wong. I've said the word, the phrase, make a request many times. So this time round, I want to extend the definition or the meaning of making a request. Because what if you have been stumbling upon a particular issue and the issue is very, very common for entrepreneurs. You don't know what you don't know. And you, you go to the google.com spend approximately 20 hours to try to figure out a problem, to try to figure out the solution to solve your problem. You spend 20 hours and it doesn't mean that you will get the answer. So what if you cannot get the answer today? You spend another 20 hours the tomorrow trying to look for the answer. And you keep on trying, trying and trying. Remember one of the episodes I said, take responsibility, stop trying. Why? Because by trying doesn't guarantee you'll be successful. So in this episode, I want to bring up a point, a point which I always share with people who are looking to start a business. And the point is one of the common mistakes that I've seen from other people who claim that they are good enough by getting the solution by themselves. And they do not ask for help. So it is literally making a request But to put it put put it in a better context, the common mistake made by a lot of entrepreneurs is refuse to be surrendered to the process and listen to what the experts have said. Now you may ask who are these experts? Okay, so let me define who they are. They could be your mentors, they could be your coaches. Oh my god, you mentioned mentors and coaches, that will cost me a lot of money. I understand. There's no free service in the world, all right? Because if your coaches or mentors spend time with you, what you are do, what they are doing is they're trading their time for money. They have to be paid because they are giving away their times to you. So my question for you is that in your business, do you have someone whom you might call coaches or mentors who are there willing to help you when you need help? Because you know why? You might spend 20 hours times multiples in order to get a problem to be solved. But what if the mentor or the coach has been been through the experience before, has faced the problem that you are facing right now, and by listening to what they tell you, you get the solution in perhaps 15 minutes time. So it's not 20 hours times multiples. Is 15 minutes that will tremendously shorten your learning curve. And you know what? How much time could you be saving as a result of getting help from your coach or your mentor? Does it cost you money? Well, financially, yes, but also you have saved a lot of time. And if you agree, time is valuable. So you are paying time, you are actually paying someone to get back the time. So think about it. Is that costing you any money or help you make some money? Because now that you have a solution that allows your business to move forward, you can help a lot more people. You can help a lot more people and make a lot more money faster, easier and more efficient, isn't it? So understand that the mistake about being good enough and not asking for help because thinking about they are expensive is actually a poor person's mindset. It's true. Why? Because if you think that the coaches and the mentors are expensive, your clients will feel the same when they want to engage you. You see, the point of reciprocity happens in the universe all the time. When your clients see you as a cheap person, because you are cheap to other people, that is called reciprocity. When you are able to solve your client's problem easily, 
and you want to charge them a lot, don't you think that your mentors and coaches will have the similar mindset? Because if I can promise you, using my proven process with result, that I can solve your problem, save you, let's say, $10,000 in your business. I'm not only asking for $1,000 from you. Or if I'm able to show you a process that helps you triple your sales, and you just pay me a fraction of that amount, does it make sense to you? Because what you are looking at is either a cost of inaction or return on investment. Whichever approach you might think, it is worth investing the amount and the money to get a result. But having said that, many people actually have chosen to think in the, di- in the directly opposite way. They see coaching as a cost. They don't see mentorship and coaching as something that is, that is actually helping them make more money. Which is why a lot of people decide to spend their sweet time to figure out something on their own. And the worst thing is that it may not get them anywhere. So this is a very common mistake. Now you may ask, so what are the coaches, what are the mentors that I should look for? Now, Robert Kiyosaki has summed this up very well because at one time he actually said, beware of the fake teachers. If you are asking for someone about entrepreneurship, about doing business, is it useful to get someone who is an employee or who are, your, who are maybe your family members, who are your friends, but they are employees, right? So it doesn't make any sense. If you have a problem on taxation, for example, well, you can ask me because I'm a tax expert. I've been doing tax for 23 years. Not just learning the theory, I'm actually in practice. I'm not a fake teacher, if you like. Compared to someone who is an auditor, who is a bookkeeper, would you want to ask a bookkeeper for tax for solving your tax problem. Well, one time that was back in 20, I think 2014, 2015 timeframe, that happens a few years ago. What happened was that one of my clients came to me and asked, I got some trouble from Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore or the Singapore Tax Authority. And I asked what happened because the tax authority rejected her claim on deduction. I think it's a deduction problem, but let me think about, oh no, she has an income which less authority has regarded as taxable income. And that's the case, okay? So what happened was that I asked her, what have you been telling the tax authority? Well, the tax authority has received a letter of objection. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Can I take a look of the objection letter? Until now, I'm using that example in my training to demonstrate that when you need help on tax, get the right people on board. Because I, when I saw the objection letter, I fell off the chair, literally. When I saw the objection letter, I noted it was a very, very sketchy objection letter. There are certain requirements that need to be fulfilled for it to be considered as a valid objection. However, this is drafted by an auditor who knows nuts on tax. And what the auditor has done is just simply say that, wow, I object to your assessment because it is so bloodily expensive. Thank you. I was laughing. I couldn't hold my, hold my laugh, laughter, really. I say, what the hell is all this thing? Uh, in this world, there are people who are anyhow crafting objection letter without knowing the crux of what constitutes a valid objection. And I asked the client, so how much did he charge you? And he said, and she said, well, the auditor has charged me $500 for this letter. Oh my God, $500 for this letter, which is not a valid objection, that's easy money. Well, if I can produce such letter for $500 per piece, if I'm able to do 20 pieces a day, well, that is an awesome $10,000 a day. And if I can do it 20, 20 days a month, well, that is an obscene amount of $200,000. Well, I can be rich very easily. But you know what? There's no such thing like this in the world. So that is a very good demonstration of my example of something that I personally experienced before where someone actually got the help from the wrong person. Okay? So trust me, if you are looking for people to help you, make sure you know, you make sure that person really is a teacher. When Robert Kiyosaki said, Okay, a teacher, when what he actually meant by teacher is a teacher actually lives by 
not just the theory, not just by knowledge, but by his experience. So he is actually doing what he preaches. So Kiyosaki actually one time said about the CPA, the charter, the charter accountant or certified practicing accountant example that he gave. He said, at one time I was looking for a CPA to help. So I stumbled upon this person who is a CPA. So I asked the person, so are you a CPA? And the person says, yes, I am. Okay, so where do you get a degree from? I said, I get the degree from this university. Are you practicing as a CPA? Kiyosaki asked. And this person said, no, I'm not practicing. Oh my God. So what do you do right now? Well, since I graduated from accountancy school, I was given the opportunity to teach accounting in university. And that's how I become a CPA. <laughs> Kiyosaki uses the famous F word <laughs> immediately and said, this is really nonsense. A fake teacher versus a real teacher can make a very big difference. So understand that when you look for your coaches or mentors, make sure you look for the real one. In other words, they have to have that experience about the problem you are facing. If you don't know what they have experienced, ask them. Remember, by asking questions, you can smell. If they win, you can tell. All right. So remember, coaches and mentors are very critical part of our business. And at the same time, when you look for coaches and mentors, make sure you look for the real teachers, not the fake teachers. I hope that you enjoyed this episode so far. And if you have any questions, comments, let me know. And once again, if you have your friends, your peers, and your colleagues whom you think or feel this episode is very, very important for them, share with them this episode. All right. So be relentless and get the code to help you solve your problem. And once again, only look for real teacher. This is Jack Wong from Cracking the Entrepreneur Code Podcast. Look forward to seeing you in another episode. And bye. To continue cracking the entrepreneur code, subscribe for more episodes and download the Amazon bestseller, Cracking the Entrepreneur Code, 7 Tips to Build the Business You Always Wanted at crackingentrepreneurcode.com. Learn more about author and host Jack H.M. Wong and book your 30-minute discovery session to overcome any professional challenge at jackhmwong.com apply.